This presentation is in no way meant to offend or exploit the historical, psychologically traumatizing event that September 11, 2001 was and still is, but just historically look at some select old school retro video games with a connection to the towers themselves, which were so influential and iconic for so many years. This video's only purpose was I just wanted to sort of talk about how the towers were represented in retro video games themselves, even if just briefly. I will not be looking at games or making any references to Building 7, which also fell that day, or the Pentagon or any of that 9-11 stuff. I will also not be showing any footage from 9-11 directly if I can help it, because this is about the Twin Towers appearance in retro games, which were created well before September 11. That being said, viewer discretion is advised because I sometimes cuss and I do have an opinion. It's crazy to wake up one day and realize it's been 17 years now since the World Trade Centers went down in a terror attack on September 11, 2001. These incredible buildings will forever be iconic in the minds of many, including myself. These really were engineering marvels. Completed in 1973, where they stood for 28 years at over 1,360 feet, they were the tallest buildings in the world when completed, ending the Empire State Building's 40-year record. Even after taller, bigger buildings were made, like the Sears Tower two years later, they still had the record for the most floors at 110 stories each, which I have to mention were each an acre in size. But, you know, the fact that there was two of them and what they contributed to the epic New York City skyline will never be matched, no matter what or how big a building is constructed, there will never be another set of buildings like these. Construction of the towers began in 1966 and took seven years to fully complete, though the buildings did have some residents a few years earlier. They were monolithic structures that caused awe around the world. I still look at pictures and videos sometimes of these towers and I just get chills. It's almost like an asthma response. You mean ASMR? What the fuck is ASMR? Autonomous Sensory Meridian Response. Oh, asthma. That's what I said. Sorry. Hmm. Anyway, it's almost like an asthma response. It can give you chills because it's just so crazy. I mean, look at these two mammoths. It makes my tits look bigger. They were actually cities in and of themselves. At its peak, the Trade Centers hosted over 50,000 employees on a typical work week and as a landmark hosted 200,000 visitors weekly. With over 80,000 pieces of mail in and out every day, it had its own zip codes. And they were just really something to behold when and where they stood for 28 years. Now eerily, such iconic structures of such attention for whatever reason would have images of attacks for years, almost since the beginning. Movies and TV shows prior to 9-11 often showed fictional destructions way before the tragic day. Now it might be arguable, but it's pretty weird looking back on it that there was always this impending looming disaster on these structures in retrospect. I think a lot of this started in movies, but soon video games would follow suit. But in gaming, especially back in the 80s and 90s, it was pretty niche and there was just so many obscure games, but it was all just fictitious at the time, but of course we all know it did become a reality. Now I'm not here to analyze 9-11 or make jokes or speculate on the events of that day, especially its indiscrepancies or repercussions. I have a video game channel based on old school video games and I don't mean to not pay tribute to the people who lost their lives in this catastrophic event on 9-11, not to mention the many who lost their lives after or anything like that. I just want to pay a bit of a tribute to the towers themselves and look at video games from the old school era that featured the iconic structures in one way or another. Even if it's sometimes more of a metaphoric or symbolic way, I'm just going to sort of go through a list of various games with situations both good and bad that feature the Twin Towers, and just sort of briefly see what I think of their appearance and such. On the 17th anniversary of the day where they would no longer stand. Okay, Captain, let's knock them out of New York. One of the earlier appearances of the Trade Towers appearing in a video game that I can think of was the 1984 Laserdisc arcade game called Cobra Command. Not to be confused with another Cobra Command that came later, also by Deco, or as they were later better known as Data East. Most never got to play this one as Laserdisc games and their cabinets were really expensive, so I'm sure it wasn't very common even back in 1984. Most know the 1983 iconic Dragon's Lair and how amazing these games looked, even though they were more of an interactive movie, really, often with quick time events. This on rail shooter opened with this scene from New York. It was pretty epic for the time where you scale the trade centers pretty much right off the bat, before going more urban and then later jungle levels and such. I imagine it was a pretty unique sight for a game in 1984. It had a very scaled back compressed port on Sega CD, but that was eight years later. Okay, Captain, let's knock him out of New York. 
I also got PS1 and Saturn ports, but they only stayed in Japan, and that was over a decade later, but at least these ports look more like the original than the Sega CD version by far. Still, for 1984, it's a bit of a wild ride that featured the iconic towers and a beautifully animated game. Now, I suspect the explosions and flying around New York City would be too taboo now, but it was quite the way to start this ride off. Before going further back in time, let's stick to arcades and helicopters one more time with Sega's 1995 arcade game Gunblade New York Special Air Assault Force. Bit of a mouthful. Taking place entirely in New York, this light gun shooter had an opening stage on the alternate hard mode campaign that took place on the Manhattan Bridge, with the Twin Towers clearly visible. This sort of starts or continues, of course, a chaotic pre-9-11 scene that's sort of awkward now, just by nature of flying around New York and blowing things up. It was just sort of the nature of the times, and the game's plot was just simply a terrorist attack was unleashed on New York's Times Square by a fictional, I don't know, I guess these are androids, who aim to overthrow the government. The Special Air Assault Force, the SAF, the S-A-A-F, if you will, were called in to take care of the job. Like, whatever, at least they're not called SCAT, but uh, more on that later. The operation has successfully concluded. All units return to base. Staying in the arcades, often games just had that New York City gritty vibe of the time. This was during the height of it being known for being this crime-heavy place before cleaning up its act later. Timing. You're telling me? Get a purse. Hey, get a purse! Oh, stupid banana raincoat wearing bitch. Movies often represented this, often making it the scary place where you'd be mugged, or even worse. I deliver a message. <laughs> Shut it. Even games not having the trade towers directly in them just sort of represented this gritty you know, whatever, especially in a lot of its title screens. But let's move on from that. I just wanted to mention this influence that New York City itself had on a lot of games, whether they were overblown stereotypes of the city's image of the era or not. Again, the World Trade Centers were so iconic, there was video games taking place in like the 30s and 50s, supposedly, that had them. Like in this 1986 game called Empire City 1931, which clearly is in New York. I mean, maybe this is just fictional, but what's with this building? It's like, really, what else can it be? I mean, it dwarfs the Empire State Building. Empire City, for whatever reason, is not a bad game. It, for some reason, I find it a lot of fun, but while it almost got ported to the NES, it just stayed in Japan on the Famicom, honestly, because it was probably just too violent. In the 1989 game Violent Fight, a pre-Pit Fighter-style sort of game that I actually quite enjoy, on stage 2, we're fighting on this interesting backdrop. Again, the plot says it's the 50s, so what are these towers then? I suppose this could be LA, like what is this, Arco Plaza? But uh, that still wouldn't make sense for the 50s. Not to mention, clearly we're fighting on some sort of bridge and there's water, so I don't know. I guess some of these old arcade games, clearly the historical timelines of things didn't matter, just some skyline or at least some sort of skyscrapers was just required for all cutting-edge video games at the time. But clearly seeing these, I think most people would first think of the World Trade Towers. Speaking on city skylines kind of in general, the skyline of New York City is just, I don't have words for it, it's epic. Of course this would be influential in many games and movies back in the day, often with references to the two towers. While maybe this was sometimes fictionalized or interpretations, and I know New York City isn't the only city in the world with epic skylines, but often it's the skyline I'm reminded of in games. Like, I'm a little miffed that one of the most iconic games and one of the most infamous cutscenes of the NES era arguably didn't have the towers. Like, what's up with that? Since it's clearly New York in the game, Wait, what am I looking at right now? But then there's other games that were probably just fictionalized interpretations that would at least reference the towers. Like Bad Dudes aka Bad Dudes Dragon Ninja, most famously an arcade game and NES game, clearly took place in New York, at least in the arcade version. Well, the NES version sort of dropped this, but in the game, the skyline seems very influenced by New York City. The Streets of Rage games primarily the first to have these sort of interpretive skylines as well, featuring twin towers. Like these buildings on the title screen and on stage 2 in the second game having twin towers in the background. Now it sort of loops like a recycled old cartoon background, but it's twin towers nonetheless. The final boss in the first game supposedly took place at the Marriott World Trade Center, which was adjacent to the trade centers and like many buildings was down beyond repair that fateful day. Atomic Runner, also known as Chelnov, was a Data East arcade game in 1988. However, its Genesis game in 1992 vastly improved on the original concept, and is a solid unique title worth mentioning. From the towers on the box art to the opening title and option screens to the final level set with this New York City-style skyline, 
Uh, I'm not sure why the towers are so spread apart here at times, or why there's this little building here that's so small, but retro games have their quirks. Still, this was a cool atmosphere for the Atomic Runner's final jog before the final boss battle at the Statue of Liberty, in what is a bit of an underappreciated game for the Genesis. <coughs> Hi, my name's Dweeb. Similar to repeating towers in Streets of Rage 2, the game, we're back at Dinosaur Tales on Sega Genesis seem to not understand the idea of twins to simply mean two. Like, this background looks like it's just all towers. The Super Nintendo version was a little more conservative with its use. But seeing you's giving me doubts about my brain! I mean, I guess I'll just go and say those aren't the towers, so, I mean, I don't know what they were trying to represent, I guess something else. It's like, what's going on here? Uh, what the fuck is this? Oh, it's a dinosaur's butt. Okay, well at least the movie got it right. Wow. Magnificent. Gee whiz. Another sort of trope, if you will, with the New York-esque skylines was just opening with twin towers in the background, much like movies would. Games like 1988's Vigilante opened with this sort of scene. It was a kung fu style game that's arcade title got ports on Turbo Graphics and Master System, most notably that include levels with the towers in the background. Hey. 1992's Cadillacs and Dinosaurs on Arcade also did the same sort of imagery, though with more of a post-apocalyptic way. Or maybe not, I mean there is dinosaurs. Uh, I mean, there's a conspiracy theory that Flintstones takes place in the future too, and of course Jurassic Park was a thing, but that was one year after this game, although the book was two years before Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. But Cadillacs and Dinosaurs originally Zeonic Tales was a comic book that was started back in 1987, so let's not go tit for tat here to which came first and why there's dinosaurs in a post-apocalyptic setting as I'm not too familiar with the lore. Regardless, despite the post-apocalyptic vibe, this isn't necessarily unique, taking cues most likely from many movies, but this wasn't as common as you'd think in games compared to the movies at the time. As previously mentioned, some games were just simply used to towers on title screens give it that gritty New York City vibe appeal, I guess. In the 1991 game Scat, which is the worst name for a game ever, by the way, I don't give a fuck if they made it an acronym. Why it was called Final Mission when it released in Japan in 1990, and having a different opening cutscene, the game itself was actually released as Action in New York and Europe, and actually had the towers on the title screen, unlike Scat, which omitted them. Now why the fuck North America, where New York City actually is, got a game called Scat? <laughs> I mean, Google Google SCAD if you don't know why that's ridiculous, by the way. And Europe got action in New York is beyond me. I guess there was an obscure movie called Final Mission as well, so maybe that's why it wasn't released under that title here. I don't know, but as far as the trade centers, whether it's in this game is subjective. Probably not, but it is supposedly New York. Again, like with Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, this sort of opens up an eerie post-apocalyptic nature with the towers, to which we now know couldn't exist or happen, but it's something interesting if not sort of eerie. Now there's a group of eerier, more ominous games with more than just references to the towers themselves that actually hint at their destruction. I didn't want to focus on this much, but oddly it exists. Again, probably due to movie influences like 1981's Escape from New York, among many, many others, but I didn't really expect to see their destruction in games as much as I did. For example, there's games like 1990's forgotten Amiga game, New York Warriors, which some versions had a Warriors vibe, like at least in its advertising, like this one for the Spectrum port. However, the game was more like Akari Warriors or running guns like Contra or Guerrilla War. I guess I'd say this wouldn't be considered a politically correct game by today's standards. I mean, you're going around shooting dreadlock Rostomons and there's sort of offbeat shit like that. Though I suppose this is going for that 70s, 80s gritty Warriors vibe, but still. At least one thing on your side is you're the good guy. Ultimately, there's a nuke and is what is safe to assume is the World Trade Center. So you battle your way through the city and hopefully stop a nuke from doing what nukes do. It seems like not a terrible game, but this game over screen is fucked. Another very ominous game, if you will, is the 1989 game called Master of Weapon. An odd name, but it's notable because it takes place on September 11th, 1990X. 
which is an eerie coincidence for sure. It was a Xevious style shooter where you could shoot forward and below, and you can destroy buildings, uh, towers if you will. And while not being Trade Center lookalikes or having a New York City skyline per se, I don't know, it's like the opposite of a tower defense game. And I admit, the way that they collapse rather than simply explode is pretty disturbing in retrospect because you can't help but compare it to the actual tower's collapse 12 years later, which I don't need to show comparisons to. But like on TV, in this game, you just see it over and over and over again. Some people have even exploited this game or made videos about it as one of those, oh, it predicted 9-11's games. But I'm not even going to go there since so it's not really worth the effort. As often these things are just stranger than fiction coincidences. It's like horoscope fortune cookie nonsense that just happens to work out conveniently in certain circumstances way after the fact. I mean, conspiracy theories can be pretty easy to make and debunk sometimes, like, at least in certain contexts. Like, I'll make one up now. Oh my god! Scat predicted 9-11, man. See, it was called Scat in America because on 9-11 we got shit on. In Japan it was called Final Mission because 9-11 was the final mission that changed everything, man. And in Europe it was called Action in New York. See, it's all connected. Why didn't they call it Action in New York and America? Because we got Scat. See, they couldn't call it Final Mission here because they would give it away. And there was this movie that no one saw with that name. No one ever saw or heard of it. And look at this poster of the movie here, man. It's got the trade centers on it. Don't you see? The movie is like a Rambo wannabe. It took place in Vietnam. There's no reason I even have the towers on it, man. Why in the US and Europe versions does the cutscene say it's not a drill, it's not a drill, it's just like NORAD, man. And why has Final Mission got its own exclusive cutscenes where shit's just blowing up, they're just blowing up the city, only in this version though. Why is the title screen in Action New York show the towers and why in SCAT it's the NES game just SCAT? Don't you see it's all connected, it predicts 9-11. Look at my score, man, it's 9-11. It only came out in the US in 1991. If you lose one of the nines, what's that leave you with? 9-11. The proof is in the pudding, man. Like, why does the Final Mission take place in 20XXX? Is that a porn reference? No. No, they decided to classify the year to keep something from us. Obviously. Oh my god, shut the fuck up, you tinfoil hat wearing nut. Like, yeah, let's not go there. You see how ridiculous it is. I guess to keep with these ominous sort of parallels for a few more titles, another sort of eerie game, though subtle, would be from the Aerial Fighters series with Aerial Fighters 2. Released in arcades in 1994, it has a stage which is clearly New York with scaled down sort of twin towers, of course. Like many buildings in these sort of games, they are destructible for like, I don't know, money and points. Of course this wouldn't fly now, no pun intended, but back then it was acceptable as what would happen 8 years later would seem like a crazy unlikely scenario. Not to mention they don't collapse due to gunfire like in Master of Weapon. Another odd, ominous example would be 1992's King of Monsters 2, a giant monster-themed title a la King Kong Godzilla sort of approach, where in the first stage these giant larger-than-life monster characters duke it out, destroying landmarks and such in their wake. Now obviously it's silly to have the White House, the Golden Gate Bridges, all on the same stage, but of course the Twin Towers are in here too. And yeah, they collapse in sort of a predestined way. Oh my god, this predicted 9-11. What? No, it didn't, you fucking nut bar. Again, at the time, this was innocent fun, and playing it now, you know, I still don't really find anything wrong with it. I mean, you're throwing buildings at each other, you're giant monsters. Giant monsters do what fucking giant monsters do. Yo. Me want to grab it, want to eat it, but me way. Me want it. But it is eerie how specific this is, like, seriously. Now, had this been a real-life scenario, I mean, I'm sure entire cities would have evacuated knowing that giant monsters are on the loose fighting. We would have seen it coming, but again, this is the fictional fantasy world of video games. It's not foretelling an actual surprise, unexpected attack like we'd see nine years later. In reality, I mean, I can't blame this game for having this towers collapse thing. Monster movies, Godzilla specifically, in a lot of ways was spawned in response to the nuclear bombing of Japan in the Second World War, which more or less was like a result of bombing of Pearl Harbor, which got us involved in that catastrophe in the first place. So it's weird how history repeats itself and can be reflected through arts, movies, and video games. And again, at the time, it was a pretty common theme. Big monsters, games, and movies were popular. If you go back to 1986, another giant monster type game that may have dodged a real bullet in some ways is Rampage, where you basically go on a rampage against the country knocking down all the buildings in the United States. It's really repetitive, but it was a fun game in the arcade as you can play with up to three people in that version. And back in its heyday, it was casual enough for just about anyone to play it, even your mother. Now those are tits. At least for 10 minutes. In the Manhattan level, thankfully, you don't knock down the actual Twin Towers, which is good. I think realistically, though, had the game been a little more cutting edge or released a little later, you definitely would have knocked them down. But this was a 1986 single screen arcade game, so building towers like the World Trade Center would have just been too ambitious, not to mention too large. I mean, it wouldn't have fit on the fucking screen. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint. 
However, in the game, there is a clear New York City skyline with Lady Liberty and the towers in the background, which is a nice touch. In an imaginative sort of way, it kind of implies that they were left intact. Now, later Rampage games would, of course, have the towers, but these are very cartoony and thankfully generic, and a lot of buildings just all look the same. It's cartoony and it's a good thing. Last thing we need is stages we can't see because they'd be so filled with dust clouds and such. Why this game started to imply having the towers like pre-9-11, they weren't really up to scale or anything, and, and that's fine with me. Despite these games all about destruction of buildings and giant monsters, like with King of Monsters 2 among others, it was a more innocent time back then. Then you have weird obscure games like Zombie Nation. It's, it's a really weird game. You're ahead. Let's just say and leave it at that. In the New York City stage, you're, you're just fucking up everything. Like Jesus Christ, this fucking city just had so much fictionalized destruction pointed at it back in the day. And honestly, I just want to end this Tower Destructions pre-9-11 thing that I've seen this somehow go down the rabbit hole on, like, but it was just so prevalent in these games. I suppose playing this now, I'm more disturbed by the guys falling as it reminds me of the images we've all seen from the Trade Towers in 2001. I believe I've read a statistic that 102 people jumped that day, and if anything, this sort of triggers that memory a bit. Even though this is just a bunch of generic skyscrapers, I suppose one saving grace, at least with the people falling, is you can save them. So that's nice. The game SDI Strategic Defense Initiative. The title itself is weird because in America this was an actual proposed thing announced by Ronald Reagan in the 80s. Later this was basically dubbed, you know, Star Wars by the media for good reason because we're talking about advanced ballistic missiles and weapon concepts like laser particle beams ground in space-based missile systems that were to be ran alongside supercomputers running thousands of missiles and satellites around the globe via combat centers, etc. If you like, you can Google SDI if you want to know more. But this title screen of this game is another eerie example I'll give, but I'm digressing. I should probably not have even mentioned some of these games, really. So I'll try to move to more positive, lighthearted games from here on out. But I just wanted to mention how weird it is sometimes looking back on all this because, well, not just in games, but also in media in general, it almost feels like some weird clandestine fate the towers face in the beginning. But that just might be me. Moving on. <laughs> As a fan of NES games, titles like City Connection are fun time wasters. Known for its arcade 1985 game that was later brought to the NES in 1988, City Connection is a cute little unique driving platformer. While not super deep, it's always fun to revisit like many arcade style games from this era. Actually, a personal favorite of mine, sorta of hidden gem on the NES that I've talked about before was Sega's 1990s Formula 1 Built to Win, an ambitious driving game that included an uncommon battery backup for saving games, as this is not one of those finish in one sitting style games. Yeah. Taking a rad racing driving style, fused with upgrades, leveling up mechanics, gambling, and multiple city races, including New York with nice day and night levels with iconic towers in the background that honestly is just always fun to play as it just seems peaceful when compared to simply destroying this shit. Anyway, it's cool to just be driving calmly for once, especially at night. Keeping the 8-bit NES games, and to really get more obscure on the NES, we have to go to Japan and the Famicom with a crazy game titled Tetra Star the Fighter. It's actually pretty ambitious for NES hardware, while it's hard for me to say whether or not this is a gem of a game, as I would think most retro fanatics or general retro gamers such as myself don't even know about it, and I didn't play it too much for this video. Like, it's a weird game. Again, it's got good graphics, and I don't know, talking robot dogs and shit, so that's cool I guess, and some stages seem pretty trippy. But the first stage is weird and I don't like it. Like fuck up and there goes Lady Liberty's head. You fucked up! And oh fuck, there goes the towers. And oh Empire State Building on and on. Like Jesus, that's a lot of pressure, man. Stop, stop it, no, stop it, stop! Yeah. Fuck this game. What the fuck did I do wrong? Of course, I guess I should talk about an NES Turtles game. While the first two games had simple skylines with simple skyscrapers, it's really only the third game titled The Manhattan Project, where the Twin Towers are clear as day. From the opening cinematic screens to Manhattan being lifted by Shredder in the beginning, and being featured in the background on a few select stages, they're a nice backdrop in the game, much like they were in New York City for many years. Moving on. 
The Strike series was another interesting series spawning three titles that was generally well received at the time. The third one in particular, titled Urban Strike, was a pretty epic game with lots of political implications. I'll just focus on a stage midway through the game in New York though and how it opens in a very, I guess for lack of a better term, I'll just say eerie, like Jesus. After that image, you get briefed on your mission while the towers are still smoking in the background. This is basically a rescue hostages game, and of course one place where many hostages are being held is the trade towers. This is pretty fucked imagery, I mean I've seen footage of helicopter rescue workers on 9-11, and it's tragic because of all the smoke and everything, it was so risky to go in and try to save people, but then of course the towers came down, so it's hard for me not to think about that seeing this. Honestly, okay, fine, this game has the trade towers, but you might want to play a better game with them in it, where they're not sort of in this peril. Also, I'm not gonna lie, because I almost missed this, but the fact that at the very beginning of the game it says USA 2001 is, uh... Really? Yeah. Really? Really? Oh, uh, I don't like it. That smells weird. I'm not gonna really get in the cover art. Like the movies, I'm sure there's a lot, but one game in particular that's arguably disturbing and how we got back on more eerie ominous stuff, I don't know, I'm sorry. I tried to change the subject and I'm gonna kinda wrap things up here, but I wanted to mention a simulator game for Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo that not many people talk about called Aerial Biz. It's a kawaii game, a company famously known for ambitious yet hard to get into simulation games because they're usually got this learning curve and would often be better suited on like computers with keyboards. However, Aerial Biz with its sequels is one of the more accessible ones from this company. You're basically a CEO of an international airline and you have to expand your business to become the industry leader against three other airlines. It's an interesting game with a very interesting perspective on world business rules and again it's a simulation game and they thought about how running a business like this could play out. But consider looking up a review if you want to know more. So the only real reason I bring it up is its cover art here. Seeing it initially you may have noticed this playing in the New York City skyline and then you might be like oh well where's the towers? But then it kind of dawns on you and you go <laughs> Oh, I'm in the tower, aren't I? It's no problem. It's like no problem whatsoever. Piece of cake, piece of crumb cake. Jesus, give me a fucking break. Spider-Man taking place in New York I'm sure has a lot of tower appearances and games, but this one based on the animated series has sort of a bothersome intro. And I don't like it, that's really all I'm gonna say about it. There is one level with the Twin Towers in it though and a nice skyline, so that's nice. Change it, change it quick. The towers, of course, as we got into more modern gaming in the late 90s, would include the iconic skyline in a lot of games. Like, it might have even kind of gotten old to see the towers in driving games like Driver or Midnight Club, Rush for Nintendo 64. I mean, often these games sort of underwhelmingly featured them, or maybe it was even kind of a chore for developers in this point to put these gigantic structures in games as we entered the early 3D era. But a good title around this time would be Tekken 2. This dude's stage features the towers nicely in the background, providing a nice backdrop for some fighting. It's sort of reminiscent of the prior mentioned generically named Violent Fight, but of course now the towers are much more recognizable. Of course, SimCity games often pay some sort of tribute, including twin tower-like structures like in SimCity 2000, 3000, and sometimes later they were in like download packs, which I believe was the case with SimCity 4000, but it's not surprising to see these iconic structures in games like this. Not to get back on eerie images of the Twin Towers' demise, but Command & Conquer's Red Alert 2 had some straight-up destruction of the Pentagon and the towers. This was actually pretty infamous at the time as it was so close to the vent. It was still playable and released with these fictional scenarios, but the box art and cover art and a lot of the advertisements had to be changed. They even offered exchanges for new box art to people, and this game really cut it close. I mean, you can speculate this game could have been recalled perhaps if more attention was on it, but who knows. Of course, after the events of September 2001, everything changed. This was a world event. Meanwhile, there was a ripple in video games, not to mention entertainment from all walks of life. Understandably, projects in the works had to be delayed or rethought or just scrapped. Some famous notable games delayed were like Metal Gear Solid 2, which had plot changes made at this time, and things like missions and details and such in Grand Theft Auto 3 were changed or modified. And again, this was felt across the gamut of things from music to games to movies, it just kind of everything. I believe more times than not, this wasn't just to avoid controversy, but with 9-11 still so fresh in everyone's mind, I believe companies sincerely wanted to be a bit more sensitive during this uncertain time. As time went on though, it's sort of interesting that many games, like the before mentioned Gun Force game that got re-released on the Wii, now had the towers taken out. 
I don't know if that's good or bad, politically correct or not. Yes, the towers were gone, but to have to take them from the consciousness of some games, I don't know if that was necessary or not. But in a similar fashion, a ton of old movies later would have the towers erased too, like just erased from existence, or they would make edits to avoid showing the towers when they televised things on TV and such, which is like, okay, but it also sort of contrasts the never forget thing, like, they were there originally, so I don't know, I have mixed feelings on that sometimes depending on the context, but it was a bit of a chaotic emotional time. Generally games having anything to do with flying of course wanted to avoid cities for a bit. A newly finished game on Dreamcast called Propeller Arena was outright cancelled, supposedly mainly due to a stage where dogfights took place near skyscrapers. Now I don't know what that means, I don't see any dogs fighting near any skyscrapers here. This is a flying game and last I checked dogs don't fly any more than pigs do. But regardless it was meant to be released on September 19th so talk about bad timing. And even though the trade centers were not in it, it was just too soon despite other games in the past doing similar things, which is sort of unfortunate as it was a good game at its core. While on the topic of flying games, why this may not be considered a game but more of a simulation depending on who you ask, it goes without saying the flight simulators, primarily the Microsoft flight simulator titles, were definitely affected. Let's fly over New York City. In fact, if you acted out or simulated 9-11, you could outright be banned from the game if you were connected to VATSIM, which I won't get into what that is. But patches and updates were often applied to take the towers out, even of previous versions, and damage effects from crashing and whatnot were taken out. And immediately after the events, most stores just took this game off the shelves, as this game received a lot of bad press, even though it's been a product since the early 80s. But now, let's go back and see how John is doing. Our daddy taught us not to be ashamed of our dicks, especially since they're such good size and all. Sometimes, I pull on it so hard, I rip the skin. John, you just about crashed into the Empire State Building. Hey, that would be cool. What the fuck is that? No, don't worry about him. It gets bigger when I pull on it. Hmm. But anyway, I'll just kind of leave things there, as I really just wanted to focus and sort of check out examples of old school games featuring the iconic towers prior to the events of 9-11. The phrase never forgets happens a lot, but now being 17 years down the line, I know sometimes we do forget. Much like Pearl Harbor perhaps for my generation, but maybe now it's like that a little bit for the generation even after mine. I mean, it's crazy to think there's a generation now that just wasn't around when this happened, especially because it doesn't seem like too long ago to me, but maybe that's because around this time I tend to watch movies about it and shit. And uh, just kind of takes you back, but regardless, I'll never forget the Trade Towers. They were amazing structures that were unfortunately taken from us, along with so many things 17 years ago. And why I really just wanted to focus on the Towers' appearance historically in some of these old video games, as I am an avid old school gamer still to this day. I know it goes without saying September 11, 2001 is a day that will not be forgotten, but the Towers will also be remembered as well in their own right. Thanks for watching.